Ali Drew, four seconds out, joined by Jonathan Kumateo. Jonathan, how are you? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here to finally make my pro debut. I just can't wait, honestly. It's been a long time coming because you were meant to do it last year. Mm -hmm. um, how frustrating was it that that was cancelled? It was crazy, but it also gave me more time to mentally prepare. And, you know, I guess that's why I'm so relaxed right now. You know, it's just around the corner, but mentally I've been ready. Physically, my team got me ready, so I can't wait. And you've had a bit of a tough time getting to this position um, because you had some medical issues that you basically got told you wouldn't, you wouldn't box again. Just talk to me about that. I was suffering from a skin condition called hydrotonatus suprativa, which is a very rare skin condition that only affects 0.1% of the world population. And that, how that basically affects you isn't just mentally, which it does a lot. You get cysts, lumps on your underarms and the areas where the sweat glands, some people get it in their face, etc. But I had it predominantly in my underarms, which obviously affects me when I'm trying to train and when I'm trying to compete. And that kind of meant that the last four years of my amateur career, I spent boxing, taking 16 tablets a day of heavy medication. And, you know, that made things very difficult. But, you know, I've overcome it now. I'm healthy, no medication. I just can't wait. I can't wait to get in there. And did you have some operations to make it better and, and now you're not going to have any more problems? Yep, so I had three operations in total. The last one being in November 2018. I had a skin graft operation and that's literally freed me from the illness since. I haven't had any issues. It was a bit crazy at the time because, you know, I had to lay down for three months. But, you know, we're here and I don't sweat anymore. So. It's great, you know, I had my sweat glands removed, so, you know, when we go out, I stay fresh. When I'm in the gym, <laughs> when I come out of the ring, I stay fresh. And, you know, the team get angry, but they know now the reason why I don't sweat. It's not because I'm not putting in work, it's because I can't. Well, we are here, we're making your professional debut this week. Um, just talk to me about what kind of fighter you're going to be, you know, what's, what's your style? I can box in several different styles, but what you will see, in my opinion, is an excellent jab. Me on the front foot, me controlling the pace from the start to the finish. And, you know, expect a great performance from myself. You know, I'll leave it at that. It, you obviously, you know, there's no crowds. None of your supporters and fans can be here. Is that a bit of a disappointment that, you know, you're making your pro debut, but no one's actually in the arena to watch you? It is what it is. I'm just happy to be here. I don't think you understand. It's been a long time coming. So, you know, they'll be tuning in from home and soon we'll be outside. So they'll be able to come. And you wanting to be quite active once you've got this fight under your belt? Get quite a few fights in this year? A hundred percent. You know, I want to box as frequently as I can. You know, I'd love to get at least five fights in the first 12 months of my career. And then we take it from there. And after everything that you've been through, do you feel like you appreciate it more than most, you know, to be to be able to make your pro debut, be able to do the sport you got told you wouldn't be able to. You know, do you appreciate it a lot more? A hundred percent. You know, I think over the last twelve months, where a lot of people's livelihoods were shaken up, probably for the first times in their lives. For me, that was like the first lockdown was like the fourth lockdown for me because I had to lay down three times prior to that. The second time being for eight months in 2017, and that was a very very tough time period for me because you know. I felt like everything was stripped away from me. But, you know, that helped me practice patience. It learnt, it taught me to be patient and it also allowed me to go back to the drawing board and really think about what I want and want to achieve in my life and how I was going about life and how, you know, what changes can I make to make myself the best version of myself. And, you know, now that we're here, the fight is around the corner. I'm just kind of glad that I had those setbacks. It was a blessing in disguise. And, you know, I spent the last 12 months where we've all pretty much been in lockdown, just, you know, mentally preparing for this. So now you are, you know, making your way into the pro ranks. Who do you rate domestically in your division? You know, who are you looking at thinking, that's where I want to be, I want to take on people like that? Respectfully, I don't care about the domestic scene. However, on the world scene, Terence Crawford. UK, I don't pay attention until, you know, I'm up there and I need to challenge for a few titles, then I'll look around. Until then, I don't care.
You're going straight to the top. You said it yourself. Thank you. Looking straight <laughs> to the world level. Um, just before we finish, do you have anything you want to say to your supporters and your sponsors? Just Obviously, they're going to be watching you Friday night, but just a message for them. Shout out to Fitstairs. Shout out to Tenacity for, you know, always being there for me, supporting me. Shout out to the team, RJ's dream team, Rod Julian, Ross Pierce, the rest of the guys. You know, I can't wait. You know, I can't wait to get in there. And, you know, I also can't wait for the more fights that we're going to have, you know, because I believe I've got a great team around me. And this is just the beginning. And for me, it's the end of the beginning. Well, best of luck for Friday night. Enjoy Thank it. Thank, Thank you. you.